This is Algebra 2 with Trig. We're working with section 6.3. This is day one. We're doing the operations and composition. So we've talked about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with polynomials. What's going to be a little bit different here is that we're going to incorporate the domains and ranges. So when you're adding two functions together, we're going to take our f of x function and our g of x function. Notice here that the f of x function is 5x and the g of x function is x plus 2. So we're going to add the two functions together. So just like we would with any algebra problem from Algebra 1, we're going to call this 5x plus x plus 2 which gives us 6x plus 2. If you're subtracting functions, we're going to take the f function minus the g function. To do that, we have to distribute our negative through, which gives us 5x minus x minus 2. That's a common mistake, is not putting your negative with the 2. So we're going to have 5 minus 1, which is 4x minus 2. Multiplication, the f function times the g function, we're going to use distribution. So we're going to get 5x times x, which is 5x squared. And we're going to get 5x times 2, which is 10x. To figure out our new function, these are all called h, to find out the new function, we're going to take the f function divided by the g function. The f function was 5x, and the g function was x plus 2. A common mistake here is to reduce the x's, but you cannot reduce the x's because of the plus 2. This is a binomial you can't reduce with a monomial. It would have to reduce with both sides. So there's nothing further that we can say there. Now when we talk about the domains, the domain of the of H consists of the X values that are in the domains of both F and G. So to figure out the domain of your new answer, to find out the domain of H, we've got to look at the domains that they came from. What's the domain of F and what's the domain of G? So the domain of the H is going to be the same as the domain that uh, that is in both of them. What do they have in common with F and G? But the other one that we have to worry about is if the denominator is going to be zero. You can't make the denominator zero. Okay, we've talked about quadratic functions, linear functions, polynomial functions. We're going to now talk about some power functions. And power functions are in the form of y equals ax to the b. So true, that could look like a quadratic put a number here, x squared. It could also look like, put a number there, which is 5x to the 1 -third. This is called a power function. We've done some like those. But we're going to talk about adding and subtracting. So we have our f function and our g function. When we add the two together, we take the positive 5x to the 1 -third and we're going to add it to g, which is a negative 11 and 1 third. So 5 and a negative 11 gives us a negative 6. Our terms are all the same here. The bases are both x. The exponents are both 1 third.
when we subtract, we're going to take 5x to the 1 third minus negative 11x to the 1 third. If the variables weren't the same or the exponents were not the same, we couldn't combine these at all. They would be unlike terms. So this is going to come out to be 5 plus 11, which is 16, and they both have x to the 1 third. So now we're going to look at the domain for both of our functions, for when we're adding f and g together and for when we're subtracting. So one thing to notice is that the f function, which is the, the cubed root, so it can be positive or negative. So in other words, the f function, the domain is going to be all real numbers. Remember that the cube root function would look something, this is a new graph for you, but would look something like that. So this is 5x to the 1 -third. So when you're talking about what can your x's be, they can be any number to the right and they can be any number to the left. That's why it's all real numbers. The g function which is negative 11 and 1 third. Don't forget your x. The negative is going to flip it upside down, so then it's going to become something that looks like this. So this is going to be y equals negative 11 x and 1 third. Again, that's going to be all real numbers. There's any value of x you can plug into it, positive and negative, zero, any value of x. So it's all real numbers. So when you add two functions together, where are the x values that are the same? They're the same everywhere. So that's going to be the domain is all real numbers. When you subtract the two functions from each other, like we did in part B, the domain again is all real numbers because those are the x values that are represented in both of the original domains. Next we're going to multiply our f function and the g function. Here the f function is 8x and the g function is 2 times x to the 5 sixths. So we take 8x and we multiply that to 2x to the 5 sixths. So we're going to multiply the terms in front to get 16. The bases are the same, so we're going to add exponents. And to add exponents, we've got to have common denominators. So that's going to be 16x to the 11 sixths. For division, we're going to take our f function, which is 8x, and our g function, which is 2x to the 5 sixths. We can divide the 8 and the 2, and that's going to give us 4 then the bases are the same, so we're going to subtract. You take the top exponent minus the one on the bottom. Again, we need common denominators. So there we're going to get 4x to the 1 -sixth. Then to talk about the domain and the range, we know that the f function, this is a linear equation that looks like that. It exists forever right and left. So the domain is all real numbers. The g function which is 2x to the 5 sixths. 
Now what that's going to look like that should be two times the domain for this guy is going to be the denominator is even so it's going to be like a square root graph it can only have positive results so the, the 5 is not overly involved with this answer but it's all the values x greater than or equal to 0 so the domain is x is greater than 0 for the g function so now if we look at the f of x times g of x the domain would be where they're the same this is all the numbers this is greater than 0 so it's going to be x is greater than or equal to 0 that's where these are both the same this is positive and negative this is just non-negative and then the final one, when the f function is being divided by the g function, the domain is where they're both the same. Again, that's where x is greater than 0. But remember, the g function can't make 0. So looking at the g function, what would make it 0 would be the x is 0. So x would have to be greater than and zero for the domain. On the final question, a small company sells computer printers over the internet. The company's total monthly revenue, R, and the costs, C, are modeled by this, these functions. R of X, which is 120, this is your revenue this is the revenue, $120 for every item you sell. And the cost is $2,500 plus 75X. So it kind of looks like 75 might be the, the cost that it's taking to make each printer. And $2,500 is the amount that it's taking to start up your process of making all these printers. So the cost is this, your revenue. So to figure out profit, your revenue minus the cost equals your profit. So we're going to take 120x minus 2,500 plus 75x. So to solve that, we have to distribute correctly. which when you subtract here you get 45x minus 2500 explain what the difference represents it would be the company's profit 